definitely did not withstand the current rip little transistor so but just for fun <laughs> let's try that again initiating <laughs> Yo, this started 50 minutes ago, 8.30 a.m. What is this you're doing? This is, this is ridiculous. It is Tuesday. Are you kidding me? Can't you really prop a hole? Bro. It's half past 4 p.m. and I think they stopped for good now, finally. I'm so tired. I'm... I'm done. I was pretty productive with editing vlogs though. With my in-ear monitors, it was, you know, manageable. Yeah, but uh, there is not much energy left in me. So the only goal for this vlog is to actuate this solenoid valve with my Arduino. So I won't go fancy this time. Like in my last vlog with this money gun. Check it out right here, insane prototype. And that also means that I now need to learn about transistors because I need one to actuate it. I have a few of them, but only these small ones. I'm not sure if they are up for the job. I might fry one of them, but yeah, who cares? Let's just try that. And also let me at least try to give you a good tutorial. So let's go. So first of all, let's get started easy. Connect the ground to the ground rail, five volt to the five volt rail. Well, to the positive rail of the breadboard. We also need a switch right there, push button. And we will wire this push button to the negative rail and the other side to the digital input number two. This is also something that I just learned. You don't necessarily need a pull-up resistor for a push button because there is already one integrated in every Arduino Uno. So that's convenient. Let's get to the code, shall we? First of all, define the push button. Input two right there. Let's get to the void setup. Always start with serial begin and the rate 9600 and then pin mode push button will be the input mode because we want to read the button input basically let's get to the loop to make this internal pull-up resistor work we need to digital write high on the push button digital write push button high this will apply 5 volt on this pin right there and then we just need to say if Digital read push button goes to low, aka when we press it, it gets connected to the ground, goes low. Then we want to print in a new line, pressed, and 300 milliseconds of a delay. That's the first part. This one has a faulty contact, I reckon. But now when I press this button, you can see it in the monitor, serial monitor. Needs to be the same rate as specified up here, and you can activate the monitor on this magnification glass. Icon. If you're not sure about the contact, you can just test it like so. You just take the second input right there and stick it into the ground. And this will result into a pressed, pressed line right there. Right, this is that. Next up, we need a power supply. This is 12 volts for the valve, just connect to the breadboard. And next up, well, let's just test Let's test this valve. So now I will use my clamps, one side for the valve, the other side for the positive rail. And now we can try it out. Oh my god. Heck yeah. Next up will be an LED experiment, but first of all we need to connect the ground. So just connect the two ground rails, the two negative rails to generate a common ground. Also ignore these buttons and this speaker right there. So now we will get to this freaking transistor. To be honest, I don't fully understand it yet, but I got it to work. Flat side faces to me. And when we take a look at this data sheet right there, the first leg is called the emitter, the second one is the base, and the third one is the collector. Now the emitter goes to the ground, that's easy. So just connect the emitter to the negative rail. The second one, or the middle pin is also easy, it's the base. That's how you control this transistor and connect the base to digital input number four and lastly we need to connect the collector to the LED to the negative side aka the flat side can you see that flat side of the LED that's the part that I do not understand yet but apparently this is like emitter is ground and this other thing is ground as well so oh my god well this thing just is a switch so these two connect okay makes sense kind of 
So this one needs to be ground 2, goes to the ground to the LED. And this LED obviously needs a resistor, 220 ohms right there, to the positive rail. These are all the new parts. And now let's have a look at the code. We obviously need to define a new pin. LED will be the fourth one. As I said, pin mode will be output as well. And inside this if loop, I added more stuff. We already got this press one and we already got the delay. Now I want to digitally write on the LED, AKA on the fourth pin, I want to write high. Then I want to wait for 300 milliseconds and then I want to turn it off again, write low and wait again. Then I want to turn it high again and I want to wait and then turn it low again, I want to wait. That's this thing. So when I press the button, I will get a pressed and then this LED will activate for 300, turn off for 300, activate for 300 and turn off for 300 again, just like that. Let's make this interval a bit higher. Let's go for half a sec, half a sec, second, second, upload. And just to prove it, half a second and a second right there. It's as easy as that. And now the only thing that's left is to exchange this LED with the valve. And obviously we need to connect it to the other rail. Well, let's hope for the best. Let's hope that this thing won't blow up. Let's just try it. Yeah, let's just... So that's the ground. That's all we need actually. The valve is already plugged in into the positive one. And now we just need to get this ground thing in there. There we go. And now, well, let's just go for it and let's hope for the best. So it should open up for half a second, close for half a second, open up for one second and then close. So let's see. Well, it opened like once and I think this thing is dead. Okay, what happened? Oh my god. Let's go back to the LED. And yeah, as it looks to me... Yeah, this thing is totally broken. I'm not sure what it's doing now, but... I think it just got ripped open. Definitely did not withstand the current rip little transistor. So, but just for fun, <laughs> let's try that again. Oh yeah, 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 I get it. It's just open all the time now. Yup. And yeah, this thing is done. God damn it. Rip. Let's go back to the LED. Wow, check this out. Check this out. This thing is completely busted now. Yeah, it's really... It's hot, so let's get another one. Let's get this one in there. And I obviously won't use it on the valve again. But yeah, proof of concept, successful. Also check this out, that's a funny little quirk. If I activate the valve, I think there is a massive power drop. So it will think that this button just activated and it will activate the LED. Thankfully, nothing broke. As you can see, it's still working. But that might be a reason why to use a, well, a separate pull-up resistor, maybe, or maybe capacitors, I don't know. I'm not there yet. That's a capacitor right there. 200 microfarad, 10 volt, that should work. It should work fine. Okay, let's try that again. And it's still happening. Hmm. Why? Why is that? Maybe someone can explain in the comments, I don't know. Also, never mind, I just tried it with a resistor and it's still same outcome, so yeah, I have no idea what's going on. So there we go, that was my how to activate a solenoid valve with a transistor tutorial, well, proof of concept. It worked one time, and well, if you exchange this little transistor with a MOSFET, then it will work fine, it should work fine. I will update on that in this vlog, check it out when it's ready. I already ordered some, I just need to wait for them to arrive. But yeah, that's pretty much how it's done. It's Pretty easy actually. Another cool thing that I will add when I got the MOSFET is a programmable delay. I want to program it with two switches. I want to dial in the milliseconds. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, enough progress for today I would say. Smash that like the way my transistor got smashed by the current. Bang the bell like crap. Pa. Check the recent news on chrisvider.com. And yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow.